Good morning. Uh, today, uh, Thomas and I kind of decided what we would be talking about. And one of the things I pull a lot of time when I would come to class, uh, I would bring my, uh, my grab bag, a little box. And I used to carry this in my truck under the seat. And these are a few of the things that I thought might be important for you to see. And probably number one is this one here. This is a hose washer. And I always carried two or three of these in my pocket. If I had a little coin pocket, I'd have nickels and dimes for the parking meter. Always had two or three of these. These go in the, in the end of the hose. It goes to the hose bib. And a lot of time when you take your hose off there and move it to something else, they fall out. Then you go to hook it back up and water flows all over. I've had uh, clients tell me, oh, I guess I need a new hose, take my old one away. I look at it, it looked like it was brand new. I take this, take it apart, and I look, there's no washer in there. I reach in my pocket, I put a washer in it, I hook it up, and I call her, I said, the hose is fixed. Oh, it was like I did magic. You, you make a lot of points with your client with a stupid little washer, you know? So keep that in mind. If any time it leaks at the faucet or at a fitting where you have a, a um, nozzle or something that leaks, most likely it's the washer, okay? Don't just keep cranking the thing on there with pliers or anything. Take it apart, put a new washer in, okay? The next thing that I carry uh, uh, around a lot are these here. These are um, springs for a Felco pruners. Let's see if I find my Felco pruner. Right here. And this comes out. When they get old sometimes, when you're up in a tree or something, it'll break and fall off. Now, how do you, you close them, but they won't open. So I used to learn how to use my hand like this. You know, temporary. Uh -huh. and, but then I found out you keep this thing sitting in the red box, and then I come down out of the tree, put a new spring in, I'm back at work. Okay? So very inexpensive. You buy it, you, it just fits right in like that. You don't need any tools just like that and you're back in business. Put a little bit of oil on it. Every once in a while put a little oil and that'll keep it from rusting and breaking, okay? It's just spring steel. You buy them from um, orch um, um, Urban Farmer for sure. They, they have all the parts for the um, Felco shear. So I always carry those, let's see. I, I bought these a while back. So I don't know. They were only four dollars and fifty-six cents. Okay, for two of them. When I started teaching here, way back in primitive times, Felco first came out. They cost five ninety-five for the whole pair of shears. Now they cost about forty-five dollars. You know. So I used to tell the head of the department, we should buy a hundred pair. And as the price goes up, we can make money selling them to the students 10% less than they can buy them anywhere else. No, no, it won't happen. Well, they went up a little bit more than 10%. Okay. And the design and the materials haven't changed, Gus? Pardon me? The design and the materials is no, basically the same uh, thing, huh? Almost 90%. And there's, they're originally Swiss made. Now, in fact, mine say Swiss made on them. They're old. I don't know if anybody got a new pair, maybe they say something different. Okay. The next thing, if you work around here, this little faucet, like out in the front of the department, we have some hose bibs, but they don't have a, a handle on them. And they're made that way, so this fits inside, and you can run the water, take it when you go. Otherwise, children come by, turn the water on, and leave it. You know, so whenever you have a hose bib outside, a lot of time you can put that other type of hose bib on there. So you need a key. That's always in my pocket. Always in my pocket. Then and another little thing that I always found important. 
see. Is graphite. No oil in this. And it's got it squirts. You take this off and it, it's powder. And you could put this up at the end of a lock, the lock in your your house, or I use it a lot on padlock. Because they're outside, they get wet, they get rusty, and you can't even get the key in, or it won't turn. A couple of pushes of this, and run the key in and out a few times, it's slick. It's like you oiled it. You don't want to put oil into uh, a lock. That, as it dries out, it'll gum it up even more. So you use the dry graphite. I've been packing one of these for 50 years. Thought it was a very important. And then this one doesn't take a lot of room, so I keep it in the red box. Got a point on it here, a little like socket, and this is for drip irrigation. You want to put a hole in, in your drip irrigation, a half inch or three eighths, and put a, a connector in, that's the punch. And you're all done. Instead of a big piece of equipment, takes very little room, and if you have to do it, and you don't have that, you're in trouble, okay? Sometimes the, the uh, little spray heads come off the little quarter inch tubes and this is here is like a little wrench and tightens them back down. Very simple. Okay, the next two couple tools I wanted to show you. One is a SAR probe and I find this to be a very valuable um, diagnostic tool, okay? Um, I've never been able to find them uh, for sale, you know, in a retail. So you go to Gempler's, it, it's a supply house. You could look them up uh, on uh, your computer or probably Amazon. And this is about a one foot one. And I'll show you how it works in a, in a minute. And the other thing, I, I, this, I just keep in the truck or my car if I'm going consultation. And the other is a little magnifying glass. Any kind of little thing and then, you know, it just goes in like that so it's protected. So when you want to look for insects that are so tiny, you use this. You look for disease. This is a great little tool. As I told Thomas, when you do, go to do consultation, I used to listen to some of the old gardeners, you know, and we had this one guy, and I thought he was so wonderful and knew everything, but he would pull this out. He'd be wearing his glasses. He had white hair, and he smoked a pipe, and he would tell the clients about their plants, and they were mesmerized. So you have to have a few props when you go out, but the props should help you in your work. I'm, I'm just kind of kidding how you should act and dress, but these are the tools, if I'm going on to do consultation, these two right here, okay? okay? For this, I've used the soil probe for many things. A lot of times I know how, if I have hard pan, and if you've taken classes here at school, hard pans when you put one soil on top of another, right where the interface is, it makes like a barrier and the water won't penetrate it. So if you push this down in the soil and it stops, you figure, hmm, hmm, what's happening? And then if you do this and keep pushing and you go through a layer and then it gets soft, you know you had hard pan. You're gonna have to do something to break that up, either chemically or physically, okay? The other thing is, I wanna know what the soil looks like. So you push it down and when you pull it out, this is the profile. Hmm. This is what's on the bottom, this is what's on the top, and everything in between. So you, you can see a lot of times I've gone down about halfway and it stopped. I can't get through it. I jam it and then I pull it up and I look. This is all hard clay and rock. So nothing's going, even the roots are having a hard time there. It's got to be plants that can take, uh, have roots that are going to really look for water. Okay, um, this has helped me in soil analysis and in my later years I found out when I have root rot and some problems with the roots, you can take this part apart and look for the little roots 
And if the roots are brown or black, they're rotten. Mm -hmm. They're not viable. If they're all kind of yellow, you know, they're, they're live roots. But you see the tree is suffering, so you go out around the drip line and you, you punch it and take a, a look and see what you have. Go to another area, move in a little closer, and you could do a lot of analysis by using your eyeballs and your brain. Look at how it changes, how different it is, okay? Um, you don't pound on it. I, I've had this one for 30 years. It looks like it's almost brand new. And if, you don't, and if you don't go into rock and stuff, this still looks new. You know, if you're always going into a rock or something, this will all bend back and it would be all messed up. Also, when you're done with it, clean it out, put a little bit of oil on it, and keep it from rusting. Now, you can see I haven't done a good job there. I got a little bit of rust, okay? Also, when you do go into some of these uh, magazines that sell stuff, they have others that ha you screw on another section. So you have this part, and then this part from here to here is another section. You screw it on and go deeper. So you can go three to four feet deep. Mostly around here, in, in trees and stuff. You know, I get along with this one easy. Uh, I think Robert has one that's about two and a half feet, okay? Mm -hmm. um, tells you how well you're watering. You can check all that out. You know, you don't need a meter. Just punch it, pull it out, and see how the watering has been going down. Well, Thomas told me we're about done, so um, I hope this helps you in some of your endeavors, okay? See you next time. Bye-bye.